internet is wrong right now. On the internet machine and even in the newspaper machines, uh, there are many, many stories right now about WikiLeaks revealing that Cuba banned my next guest's movie, the movie Sicko, Michael Moore's expose of the U.S. healthcare system. The story saying that WikiLeaks has revealed that that movie was banned in Cuba. That's according to WikiLeaks. It was leaked, so it must be true, except it's not. <laughs> Mr. Moore's movie was not banned in Cuba. It, in fact, was shown in Cuban movie theaters where Cubans saw it in Cuba. It was even on Cuban TV, which I also have it on good authority, is in Cuba. But if you look at headlines about this WikiLeaked cable, you would not know that. The State Department cable that they published said something that wasn't true about Michael Moore's movie. The cable said Sicko was banned. Sicko was not banned. But because the claim was in a secret government document that was leaked, that was not supposed to see the light of day, it makes it seem like it must be true, that it's been revealed right? It's not true. It was leaked, but it's false. And that is one of the thorny, complicated, doesn't fit on a bumper sticker points about WikiLeaks. When you leak stuff, the fact that you are bringing to light something that was supposed to be kept secret makes what you are bringing to light seem both true and important. It makes leaking stuff a really great way to distribute false information. If you want to spread a rumor, for example, that some foreign ruler, say uh, <laughs> King Hamantashen of Fakistan, or Bill, uh, you want to spread a rumor that he's secretly a woman, that he's secretly selling out his country to Fakistan's sworn enemies, if you just put out a press release saying that, <laughs> nobody is going to believe you about King Hamantashen of Fakistan. However, if you arrange for that information to be leaked, oh no, we didn't want you to find out that we knew that about the king. Then it ends up being a bad day for the king. It is a great way to spread disinformation. Even normally skeptical sources suspend their disbelief. Oh my God, Sicko was banned in Cuba. There's the headline in the Guardian newspaper. It's not true, even if it was in the leak. Here's something else about WikiLeaks that does not fit on a bumper sticker. On the 28th of November, WikiLeaks dumped all these State Department documents, right? The next day, the United States government came out, came out guns blazing, calling the leaks an attack on the international community. Within a week, Sweden issued a European arrest warrant to go get the guy behind WikiLeaks in the UK to answer questions about rape charges originating in Sweden. The timing could not be more suspicious. The man accused says he's being pursued for political reasons, and it's pretty easy to follow his logic. But even if you are suspicious about the timing, there are two women who went to the police with what are essentially date rape charges against this guy. That does not fit on a bumper sticker. Can your suspicion about the forces arrayed against Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, your suspicion about the timing and the pursuit of these charges, coexist with respect for the women making these accusations against him and with a commitment to take rape allegations seriously, even when the person accused is someone that, for other reasons, you like? Joining us now is one of the great filmmakers of our time who has emerged as a stalwart defender of WikiLeaks. He's the man who just posted Julian Assange's $20,000 bail. He is my friend, Michael Moore. Hi. Thank you for doing this. Street Do you believe it? Whoa! I know! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is, um, it's like, pretend we're not here. Oh, all right. Yeah, we're, we're not going to discuss uh, your art collection, are we? Yes, uh, in yeah. great detail, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Just for people who don't know, you know, Steve Martin was here, talked about his art collection, and then they had to give everybody their money back, so. I will, however, be um, acting out the jerk. <laughs> so that will happen later. Um, so let, let's let's talk about this because I know I, I, did I know hear that, that they, the yeah. Teamsters that night had to put Steve Martin in the trunk of his limo just to get him out of here. <laughs> the audience was so angry. I know the 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 Julian Assange bail situation has been has gotten a, a lot of attention. It has sort of, uh, blown up in lots of different directions, left, right, and center. I would love to hear from you why you posted his bail. Uh, well, <laughs> I just I, first of all I think that WikiLeaks has done such an important uh, job to get the truth out about so many of the things that we haven't uh, been told the truth about. It's very interesting, the memo, that the cable that you, re uh, about the Cuba uh, screening of my, of my film, that was a, that, even that cable, which was a lie, 
was good to see because you saw how the Bush administration people located in the uh, intersection in Havana were sending back cables to the State Department uh, assuring them that you know, the, the sickle, the, the Michael Moore isn't really that liked by the Cubans, so don't, you know. Yeah. Which you would think is kind of weird. You'd think they'd want to actually put that on me, you know, that yeah. Castro and I are sleeping with each other. Right. So. <laughs> well, you'd think they would also want to get it right. If they're promoting it to the government as useful information for the government, you would think that they wanted to check and see if it was true. Yeah. But this is all part of it, the sort of the, when the smear takes place. And, yeah. and uh, you've had Wendell Potter, Keith has had Wendell Potter on the show. This is the health insurance executive who's come forward to um, talk about how uh, they spent millions of dollars trying to smear me, trying to uh, put things out there about me that weren't true in order so that people wouldn't go see sicko. So I'm very sensitive to when I, I see anyone accused like this, especially when uh, the government, in this case our government, has something very much at stake in stopping WikiLeaks. And man, when you've got the Vice President of the United States on Sunday calling him a high-tech terrorist, you've got people in Congress calling for you know, uh, uh, him to be arrested, Sarah Palin, people, uh, uh, other pundits wanting, uh, saying it would be okay to assassinate him. It's just like, um, I, you know, I don't know, man. I, I, just was, I was raised a certain way, and, it's, I, I, and I was raised to be a good Christian, in, if I can say that yeah. here. Um, Look at me. I, <laughs> It's the YMCA. You want to know what the C stands for? Don't worry. I was going to say the Islamic Community Center is looks quite well here in Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> no, but, that, but, that's, but that's true with, with all religions, I think, teach the same basic thing. That, and especially um, that you have to stand up for those who are considered the worst. And, and that in this case, as an American, you have to believe that that person has a right uh, to be heard, a right to a trial, and to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Now, I know nothing about what happened between Mr. Assange and these two women, and I have to say quite clearly, and I've been a huge advocate uh, of this since I, I, when I was 19 years old, I helped start the, the first rape crisis center in Flint, Michigan, so this has been a, a very serious issue for me for a very long time. Every woman who claims to have been sexually assaulted or raped has to be, must be taken seriously. And those charges have to be investigated to the fullest extent possible. And, and for too long, too many women have been abused uh, in our society because they weren't listened to and, and, and they just got shoved aside or they, whatever. It was just, it was, it was not, the older people in here remember the way it used to be. It's not that much better now, it got a little better because of the women's movement made that happen. So, uh, so I think uh, uh, these, these two alleged victims have to be treated very seriously and Mr. Assange has to answer the questions. That's not what's at issue here. I'm much more concerned about that, that there's a concerted attempt to stop WikiLeaks. And, and I think WikiLeaks, OpenLeaks, anybody that is trying to do the job of telling us the truth. And how about... <laughs> I mean, poor Bradley Manning, hmm. the soldier who sits in Quantico tonight. This man has been in solitary confinement for seven months. Seven months. And his crime is, his crime is that he did what they said at Nuremberg were to do. If you see something happening, especially during wartime, that is illegal, immoral, you have a responsibility as a human being to stand up and say something. And he came across, allegedly, the video of our soldiers firing from a helicopter and murdering two reporters from Reuters, along with a bunch of Iraqi civilians. That is being done in my name and with my tax dollars. I want to know when that's going on. And I admire anybody who stands up and tells us that's going on. He should be rewarded. Not well, with, be in hundreds, prison. with hundreds of thousands of documents, if they all came from Manning, and if, that, if what you're describing there in terms of exposing that is one thing among hundreds of thousands of other things that he exposed, do you want to hear the answer from him about why he chose to release everything wholesale rather than releasing the one thing that outraged him? I mean, the cable about Muammar Gaddafi having a busty Ukrainian nurse was not an, Amer was not an outrage. Yeah. This, was not, this was not him blowing the whistle on something. Mm -hmm. This was him personally yeah. taking it upon himself to declassify hundreds of thousands of documents. 
Well, I don't know. Again, I wasn't there. Yeah, I um, want to hear the explanation. But I'd that. like to hear it. Yeah. And and I would assume uh, that you know this is a young person, and so one's level of maturity maybe isn't at the level, say, a Daniel Ellsberg's maturity was at during the Vietnam War. But but we're a better people as a result of knowing the truth of what took, took place in Iraq and Afghanistan. And now with the wider WikiLeaks cables, that that that. Um, I mean, Rachel, this never gets said. I mean, we talk about the two wars that we're in, Iraq and Afghanistan. We're not in two wars. We're fighting six wars. Why isn't this said every night on the news? It's not Iraq and Afghanistan. Our military is performing actions in Pakistan. It's performing actions in Yemen, in the Horn of Africa, in Colombia. We're involved in six wars right now. We're a six-war country. That's what's going on. Why isn't that being said? I want to know about that. That's why I want WikiLeaks and, and people who are whistleblowers to come forward and tell us the truth about what's being done in our name and with our money. We will be right back with Michael Moore live at the 92nd Street Y here in New York. Please stay with us.